When the earth shakes, the crowd can contribute. What about when our minds begin to fail? One in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's disease or another kind of dementia. In Alzheimer's, we lose the memories that make us who we are. We lose the capabilities to live independently. And as of yet, there's no certain cause and no sure cure. But just as the crowd can map cities around the world, crowdsourcing can speed up essential research, this time by mapping the blood vessels in the brain. So it's like waiting for the kids coming home from school, you know? <laughs> like, hey, Mom! <laughs> when my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, we didn't believe it, really. It's like, her? Never. It'll never happen. For reasons still not fully understood, Alzheimer's impacts African Americans more than Caucasians, and women more than men. She has been in control of a lot of things for a very long time. Her mind is certainly something that she's not going to lose control over. She's too stubborn. It's just not going to happen. Where are we? Yeah. Oh, and then one day you notice something is really not right. I think it's an expression in the face where, where they are or what it was, what it is that they do, and they, and they, and they know that they don't know. Uh, I was a construction uh, um, project, project, project. The diagnosis came early October 2011. By the end of October, he finished up work and left his job. As you can see looking at Steve, the face the of Alzheimer's is not just a 95-year-old person drooling in a nursing home. It's the face of many people. There you go. In 2016, there are 5.2 million people in the United States living with Alzheimer's. That's projected to go to 13.6 million by 2050. Currently, it's costing our country $236 billion a year to provide care for people living with Alzheimer's. And that does not include what it's costing caregivers out-of-pocket costs. Our country is going to go bankrupt if we do not deal with the costs of Alzheimer's. In our lab, we're focused on trying to understand why brain blood flow is reduced in patients who have Alzheimer's disease. And although people have known about this big blood flow reduction in the brain for about 50 years, the mechanisms that lead to it have been unclear. And then also we're finding that the Alzheimer's disease causes the changes in, in blood flow. So that means that um, once you get any of these things going, it actually feeds back into itself and makes both the blood flow worse and the Alzheimer's disease. Chris Schaffer and Nozomi Nishimura run one of the world's most advanced bioengineering labs using innovative optical systems to probe deeply into living brains and bodies. And so our hope then is if we can improve the blood flow, it'll actually slow down this whole progression and perhaps help um, have slow down the whole disease. Alzheimer's disease looks to be caused by a small uh, molecule in the brain called amyloid beta. Now, individual molecule that's of amyloid beta don't cause cell injury or, or death or any problems. But amyloid beta is a molecule that's very self-sticky. And if several of these molecules stick together, they form this big sticky mass that binds to all kinds of things in the brain and kind of mucks up the works. And all of those things lead to loss of cognitive function. We study these uh, diseases in mice that have been genetically engineered to get Alzheimer's disease. So they develop the amyloid plaques, the neural death, and the loss of cognitive function analogous to that found in humans with the disease. So in these mice, we remove a section of their skull, replace it with a thin piece of glass, and then use uh, advanced microscopes that we've developed that allow us to image down deep into the brain. And then it, it turns out the imaging we're doing, we can see blood vessels. We can see blood cells inside blood vessels. And so uh, across several images and, blood, and vessels that are flowing, we'll see those blood cells move uh, from frame to frame. While in a vessel that's stalled, the, the blood cells basically stay in place. 
Now, we worked hard to develop automated image processing routines that could distinguish those flowing from stalled blood vessels, but weren't successful. We were never able to get an accuracy that was high enough to answer the scientific questions. So it turns out that the human visual system and I think human intuition is something that we still haven't been able to mimic um, in, in sort of the best computing algorithms that we have. Humans are very good at pattern recognition, at, at picking up uh, things that are moving versus things that are staying still inside a, a, a cylindrical blood vessel like this. Uh, and so the, the way that we've handled this analysis is by having large numbers of undergraduates and graduate students and postdoc just go through and manually score individual capillary segments as flowing or stalled. And at this point, we've manually scored over 100,000 individual capillary segments as flowing or stalled. It takes more than a week of work to analyze the data associated with just one two-hour imaging session. So right now, for us to acquire the data that could answer one hypothesis, it would take us about a week. To analyze it would take almost a year. So this data analysis is the primary bottleneck in the research we're doing right now. This was the first face-to-face -face meeting of the Eyes on Owls initiative. Pietro Michelucci brought together teams from two innovative and successful crowdsourcing projects, Stardust at Home and iWire, to see how their approaches might help speed up the brain research. When the Stardust spacecraft came back to Earth in 2006, it brought back the very first samples of extraterrestrial material ever brought back by a spacecraft from beyond the moon. Researchers faced a daunting task, finding microscopic traces of interstellar particles in the aerogel detectors of NASA's Stardust spacecraft. They turned to the crowd for help. Purely out of desperation, because we really didn't know how else to do it, we decided to recruit the help of amateurs, of volunteers who could help us to search these images that we collected with an automated microscope. Well, when we were first approached about the idea of applying the Stardust at Home technique to Alzheimer's research, we were frankly a bit skeptical. As I learned more about the project, uh, I realized that this is actually the perfect platform because the imagery looking at mouse brains turns out to be perfect for the uh, Stardust at Home infrastructure. I immediately went back to Chris and I said, you know, I've got some great news. Let's get started. And Chris said, wait, <laughs> you know, there's another piece to this puzzle. He said, once we understand which blood vessels are flowing or stalled, we have to place that in the context. Because to answer our research questions, we need to know how these blood vessels are connected to each other, what the impact of a stall in this one blood vessel is on the rest of the blood vessels. So he shows me this picture of all these blood vessels in the brain, like this big complex spaghetti network. And, and I... Eyewire has become one of the most popular and widely played puzzle games focused on real scientific problems, mapping the brain in 3D. A big challenge in neuroscience is actually mapping out the structure of these cells. It takes us tens of hours to map just one neuron, and there's 80 billion of them in just one brain. So we've turned the data analysis process into this 3D puzzle game, and now we have a quarter million gamers, puzzle gamers from all over the world, 150 different countries, who solve these 3D puzzles, mapping out the structure of neuron branches, which allows us to then model their function, identify new cell types, and put this in a better position to ask questions about how the brain does what it does. The most exciting part is when Chris and I sat down and we did the napkin math and and we were trying to figure out you know just how much is this going to speed up the research and when we realized that a year's worth of research could be compressed into two weeks and just the impact that was going to have on the progression of the work uh, yeah obviously we were, we were we were thrilled we were very excited. In late 2016 Eyes on Owls released its stall catchers game based on the Stardust interface. The public was invited to help crowdsource the analysis of blocked blood vessels. Some of the first players were in Central Florida. They were retirees who'd chosen the warm climate and a community with plenty to do. How many of you have family, friends, somebody close to you that either has or did have Alzheimer's, or you have it? Just about everybody, huh? If only the scientists work on it, it might take as much as 30 years 
And for most of us, it's not going to be a big benefit. This is what the game looks like. And you can get it on your phone, your tablet, your laptop. Does the game change every day? Yes, yes, they keep okay. going. They keep putting you through. They've taken all... What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How many think that it's flowing? How many think it's stalled? Shall we find out? Yes. We'll try stalled then. Okay. Correct. <laughs> and I got 402 points. Thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. We're climbing. We're climbing. Every time we find a stalled one that is really stalled, we are helping big time. One of the things I like about the, this research is that we can help my mother's generation, but I'm 64, and you know, while I want to help my mom, this is going to help, I call, kids my age. Eyes on Owls will keep on refining its gameplay interface, but its greatest impact on Alzheimer's research will come from the limitless power of the crowd. With this project, people can donate their time, their expertise, to help us be able to uh, solve this really challenging image processing problem. I think in order for it to really be successful, it needs to become a household name. It needs to become as familiar as Coca-Cola or Angry Birds, right? And, and to me, success will be if you're riding the train to work or you're just standing around in line, you look over and someone is on their phone playing. That's what I'll consider success. The hardest part for me is watching her have to give it up. You never know if they're going to remember. Those were taking an eating more in Pennsylvania. No, that's you and Dad. Huh? That's you and Daddy. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Now, you don't recognize yourself, Evazine, as gorgeous as you were that day? That's you, honey. That is you and Calvin. We want to spend these next years surrounded by our children and grandchildren and laughing and singing and hiking and making memories for our grandchildren. Creating a lifetime of memories for them with their gramps in these short years is really important because they have the best gramps in the world. When you get to the end of your life and you look back, you know, the things you remember are, are those special moments that you have with the people you care about. And Alzheimer's disease starts to take those away from us one at a time. Um, it's just not fair. I want to I see that end.